One thing I want to say that I already love about this season, for the first time since I started doing these reviews with Big Brother 18, I won't have to spend the whole summer talking about Paul. So we're off to a good start already. Hello everyone, I'm Dan the Man, and here we go again. So, on to the season itself. Given that so far we've only had two episodes and no one went home, there's a lot less to talk about here, but nevertheless, here are my thoughts so far on the first week of Big Brother 20. Before I start talking about the game and all the contestants and the twist and everything, I do want to say that the first episode where we got to see all the previous players from the last 19 seasons was really fun to see. I wish we'd seen a little bit more of them than we were given, because as someone who's been watching since the first episode, I couldn't help but be nostalgic. It was a nice touch and a good way to pay homage to a show that frankly, given how season one went down way back in 2000, seemed destined to be a one and done failure, but it managed to defy the odds and become the long running summer staple it is now, not to mention spawning two spin-offs. But enough of that, onto the actual game. First of all, the high tech twist. So far I like it. They really went all out with the house and for the first time in a while it looks like a truly unique house design not simply the same house with a different coat of paint and new furniture. So props on that. The tech thing could be fun, although it looks expensive, so hopefully it won't be like Big Brother 17 twist, where they promised a new twist to do host every week, then ran out of money a few weeks in and just started rehashing old competitions. As far as the fan voting thing, while having it interact with social media is a new thing that fits the theme and the current times, I still don't like it, because I simply do not like fan voting. As someone who spends a lot of time on Big Brother forums and fan groups, fan voting always goes down in that community the same way. People vote, then if the person they voted for didn't win, they whine that it's fixed. A lot of Big Brother fans are insanely entitled and don't like fan voting as a means to see how the majority votes and how it will affect the game. They see it as a way to get what they want and only like it if the vote goes their way. But from a marketing standpoint, it is a good thing for the show, so they aren't going to stop doing this kind of stuff anytime soon. Who knows? It may produce some interesting results, but based on the track record of these things, I don't have high expectations. I guess the first thing to talk about is the opening competition and the power and twist that came from it. I like the design of the challenges, and while both of them were remodeling of old competitions, they were well done and were exciting to watch, especially the delete folder which had fun and suspense. The second one in the security part was less impressive, but they still presented it well. Which brings me to the two punishments for Casey and Sam. Casey's wasn't too bad. Obviously being trapped in a room at certain times can hurt her game some, and it could be argued Big Brother could use that ability to do that at any time they needed to influence what she does at that point. But as the punishment goes, it's mostly on par with past costume punishments. The costume's ugly, even by this show's standards, but for the most part, I was indifferent to it. It definitely could have been worse for KC. Which brings me to... The Robot. I'm torn about how I feel about it, honestly. On the one hand, it's entertaining, and I couldn't help but laugh at Sam's nomination picture being replaced by a robot, or the scene of her and Tyler's heart-to-heart, -heart, which was both surreal and funny. But on the other hand, from the point of view of Sam's game, that was a harsh punishment to deal out, especially on the first week. The first few weeks are when players form all the alliances and relationships that define most of their game for the rest of the season. That robot is going to make it real hard to form a connection with people at a time when that is desperately important. The feeds have not been on long since I started working on this video, but I saw Sam in the kitchen with several other players, and they were ignoring her. It's like she wasn't even there. I don't think they were intentionally doing it, but it's hard to connect to a screen with a never disappearing smiley face over an actual person. That isn't even counting the fact that the robot can't go upstairs to the HOH room, and I'm not sure she could even go outside while she's on that thing. Hell, from what I've seen, she could barely move around without bumping into anything unless someone's helping her. She does go out of the suit some, which is something, but it still may not be enough. Although it could be argued that giving Big Brother's penchant to send someone immediately out on day one as part of the two-night premiere, Sam and Casey could have both had it a lot worse. As for the power to keep eight people safe, well Swaggy C and Angela definitely made it interesting. And to get it out of the way, a lot of people find Swaggy C annoying, and I'm one of them, but I'm not going to dramatically refuse to call him that, even if it does encourage him. Because frankly, 
assuming he lasts after a few weeks, which is a big assumption, everyone will eventually give in and start calling him that anyway. So no point in fighting it. He never stops saying it because he clearly wants it to be remembered so he can brand it for Mula once the show is over. Don't know if he can cash in on it, but as far as making sure we remember it, stupid or not, it will work. But getting back to Swaggy and Angela, both played the whole thing very badly. Aside from showing themselves as threats going out of the gate, which is never a good thing, they handled the social aspect of the whole thing horribly. A lot trashed Angela for basically telling Swaggy she wouldn't keep him safe, and in truth that wasn't a great move, but an even dumber move was Swaggy, who told her that she was safe after he won, even though she never asked him before the comp to save her, didn't try to make a deal during the comp, and didn't ask him after the competition, but he volunteered to keep her safe anyway. In and of itself, that's not a bad move, and in truth, comp beasts never work together even though they should, but his bad move is in not going through with it after he told her she was safe. Yes, if he could save whoever he wanted instead of picking two of four groups, he probably would have saved her, but that doesn't matter. He ultimately didn't save her after he said he would, and now she's pissed. It looks like she may not even go on the block, so if Angela wins the next head of household, a definite possibility given she clearly is a strong competitor who is not going to hold back. And if she does win, guess who she will probably go after now? It's always risky to promise someone safety, but if they don't even ask for it, don't promise it to them anyway. And if you do go ahead and promise it to them, be damn sure to follow through. Which finally brings me to the head of household competition and Tyler winning it. First of all, real quick, what was with him saying before he came into the house he wanted to win the first head of household, then saying in this episode he didn't want to put people up right away? Um, you are a fan, Tyler. You know how the head of household works. You do know how it works, right? But either way, let's get to his actual head of household. He managed to get an alliance out of it, which on paper is good, but then he didn't do what they wanted. He also clearly is near the bottom of the alliance's pecking order, so not sure he used his head of household to secure the best alliance so far. Although it has some solid competitors in it, and some players likely to draw a lot of attention fast, so short term it might work out for him, but I think it's pretty clear the group is planning to cut him loose once his number is not needed. As for his nominations... A lot were upset, but I think he made the right choice putting up Sam and Steve. I like Sam, but while some argue he wasted his head of household going for people who weren't threats, I think it would have been a bad move to try and put up Angela or Winston. Yes, they're obviously more threatening than Sam and Steve, but his alliance wanted him to go after Angela or Winston because if it backfired, he would get all the heat. Not them. Not a bad strategy on their part, but people who win the first head of household and go after the strongest players, guns blazing week one, are the ones who then go home by week three. Safe moves don't make for as entertaining of television, and they don't get the fan admiration a lot of players crave, but Big Brother is a marathon, not a sprint. Also, while Tyler just got lucky on this one, given Steve's undercover cop background and how well that worked for a certain someone in the past, he's possibly more of a threat than they think, should he stick around. Now, if Sam or Steve come down after the veto, and he's sure he has the votes, Tyler might want to backdoor Angela or Winston at that point. And who knows, maybe he's thinking to do just that. But for initial nominations, he made the right choices. At least in my opinion. And this is my review, so that's the opinion that matters right now. And with that, I close out my first review for Season 20 of Big Brother. Thanks for watching. I'll be back next week with my thoughts on the veto competition, the eviction, and whatever crazy stuff happens in between all that. I'm Dan the Man, and I'll see you next time.